All right. So we're walking today. We're going to do a little warm up before I click the timer. So uh, it's not cold today. It's actually pleasant. <laughs> the wind isn't blowing. It's not raining. It's still cloudy. And I say it's not raining, and then I felt a sprinkle of water hit me on the cheek. <coughs> uh, there's a creek down there. I don't know what creek that is, but you know what? If I feel like doing a video description for today's video, I'll find out what creek it is. Uh, anyway, yeah, the the weather's all right. I'm ready for some heat. Uh, I can't I can't burn a, a good sweat up if it ain't hot. So I'm in my hoodie and my jacket, of course. Uh, how do I feel? Let's see. My left foot is giving me a fit. And I think I pulled a muscle or something. Or I'm just sore. Uh, I did a lot of unique movements yesterday doing some cans. and I had to climb some pretty steep little ditches. and they, uh, I'm feeling it today in my left leg. Uh, I'm on day number five. five. Yeah, no, day number four of my watershed. So, today was the day of the dandelion tea. And, uh, it was not that bad this morning. I, I, I hammered through 16 ounces. And I said, I'm going to hammer through the, the next 16 ounces at about lunchtime. So that way I won't have to go that long without actually having anything to drink. Well, <clears throat> I poured up the second glass, and uh, let me just say that that was one of the hardest things I've had to drink in my life. It it tasted the same, but for some reason, my stomach, my gut was having a reaction to this stuff that I was not prepared for. I almost threw up. It made my saltless, unflavored, disgusting chicken taste even more so. And, uh, yeah, so, right now my stomach is hurting. My head's slightly hurting. I feel like I need water, as funny as it is to say that after drinking two gallons of it yesterday. Uh, but, uh, I need it to wash this taste out of my mouth. The taste is pervasive. It does not go away. It is, it is gross. <coughs> uh, I was piddle farting around on the uh, the computers uh, doing some uh, video stuff and I've learned I have got to do a better job of managing all those files because the way this camera works is it loops in 10 minute clips because of the file system that the video card uses called FAT32. FAT32 can only use 4 gigabyte files so that means I've got to cut loops. Well, the maximum loop is 10 minutes long. So I've got to deal with, you know, multiple two and a half to three gig files. And I got to get them organized. They're, uh, it's real easy to get clips out of order. So it's, oh wow, that's a nice car on this dirt road. It's really hard to get things organized. Uh, and if you don't organize them, it's hard to it's hard to fix all the mistakes. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, I am putting them together a little bit better. Uh, I've decided that even though I may pick up cans every day, I'm not going to record every day. The only thing I'm going to record every day is I've got this plan. All right. So while people may not be into watching me walk and piddle fart and chat to myself like I'm going crazy. Uh, maybe they'll watch a certain little special videos. And the video I'm putting together right now is, it's gonna be a, a, a long, it's gonna be a, a, a video that takes place over a long period of time. I don't know what I'm gonna call it yet, but right now I'm still in the planning phase. So at the end of every day when I pick up cans, I pack the, uh, that's an old ran down shack over there. <coughs> I don't know whose it is. <coughs> I see things like that and I want to go look at them so bad. I may have to do that one day, I don't know. But anyway, 
uh, I, the, on the long term uh, video is that over time you're going to see the amount of cans build up to kind of give it a sense of, uh, I don't know, gravity and how much aluminum I'm collecting. And I know that not every day I'll have a big haul like I had yesterday. I think yesterday I pulled like almost 10 pounds of cans. So, uh, <clears throat> but that was at the beginning of Camp Maker Road where all the traffic comes in at first. So, that was a interesting amount of cans. My, my arm was sore after I got through with that little job. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is, is put clips together as I do it and eventually release it and show what kind of a collection of cans I've collected. I think it's pretty cool. Another thing I'm working on is bloopers. Uh, so what I'm thinking about doing is every time a, a mishap occurs or I bust my ass and I let forth a string of obscenities, I'll release a, I'll add it to a blooper reel. So I've got all the files that I want in a folder just for that project. Oh, there's some houses back here. The Marsh Ranch, that's what that is. So maybe that old ran down shack is on their property. Uh, and the blooper reel, it might be an interesting little addition to the, to the channel. Uh, I may do some video game related stuff, but that really kind of separates from the whole purpose of this channel, which the channel serves two purposes for me personally. One is to get experience with YouTube, to get an interest in making videos, uh, and two is to keep me honest. So I'm, I'm walking every day, and I really look forward to the walk, even though I dread walking it, because I don't like walking. Now, just a time out from the conversation. This land has been clear cut. <laughs> it looks like, you know, Maybe a, a private landowner had it clear cut, but it looks like there was a ton of hardwood timber cut out of it. <sighs> I don't know what process they used to select trees to not cut now, but they left some. So the clear cuts, while they're, you know, ugly at first, they are nice to do because it brings in more wildlife and things when things start sprouting. It makes hunting a little bit more interesting. And I bet all these houses are disappointed with having all this cut out from in front of them because that was basically a privacy fence. So I bet, and I wonder, and when I pull this up on Google Maps, if, if this will look like this or if the trees will still be there. That would be interesting to see. Uh, now, back to what I was talking about, the, the being honest. It's not that I'm having a good old time. It's just that I need to walk every day. And I need to walk for my health and I need to walk to lose weight because I'm I'm really looking at the end of a loaded gun or the end the barrel of a loaded gun, down the barrel of a loaded gun. How does that saying go? I'm not sure. Here's my George Bush moment. <clears throat> uh, because, you know, my blood sugar at one point, it had gotten up to about right at 600. And my mom and my dad have now been hip diabetes. And my mom was looking at some really high blood sugar, blood sugar levels, uh, or blood glucose, glucose levels. Uh, yesterday, I think, my dad checked it. It was, it was, it was alarming, to say the least. My dad is dealing with you know, diabetes and high blood pressure. <clears throat> and his doctor insists on just doping him up with all this different medicine. And I'm like, man, I know you hate to hear it, but get on this diet I'm on. Do the low carb thing. Stop eating bread every day. Stop drinking. You know, he doesn't drink very much in terms of sodas, but he eats, you know, he eats chips, he eats junk, he eats bread. He eats potatoes. You know, his classic defense of not eating potatoes is I had a cousin who went to the hospital 
and he was in a diabetic coma. And they're like, well, they, they brought him a baked potato for lunch. And I said, uh, yeah, but that's the hospital. You know, he was probably getting medicine that was dropping his blood sugar really fast and they wanted to balance it out or something. You know, and you could probably enjoy a potato here and there every once in a while. But if your sugar is that sensitive, it might be better for you just to cut the damn sugar out. Yeah, your energy level might go down, but it's better than being dead. Uh, and plus, I'll be honest with you, now that I have diabetes, I've noticed one thing. It doesn't matter what I eat or what diet I'm on, my energy level is just not there. You know, if I take in a lot of carbs, I don't have any energy because my blood sugar shoots up. If I don't eat any carbs, then, then I'm, then that ketosis, well ketosis, it takes, from what I've read and what I've heard on some podcasts, you have to be on a low carb diet for like a year, up to a year, maybe even longer for your body to fully adjust to burning fat. And considering that I'm not on a ketogenic diet because I implement a cheat day once a week, I don't think I'll ever be in any kind of optimal level because like my parents, I like good food. I like potatoes. I like bread. I like those things. And if I can maintain a healthy blood sugar and feel okay and beat back any other health problems caused from my weight by losing the weight and keeping my blood sugar now, well then shit, I'll go six days without eating the stuff I like just to have that one day where I can just go off the rails. And I don't mind it. There are some substitutes for the low carb lifestyle. A lot of them don't work. A lot of them do work. But it's just a matter of experimentation and trying to change things. When you're craving something sweet, you know, instead of mustering up what little bit of willpower you have to fight that craving, find an alternative. Find a way to, uh, to, to make satisfy your sweet tooth, you know. There's ways to do it. You just got to try. Uh, and me, I've, I found a lot of happiness in the uh, Atkins candies, which... They're under this, they're in this uh, kind of controversial lawsuit right now where uh, people are saying it messes up their blood sugar levels. So, I don't know. But I've had pretty good luck with them. You know, they don't knock me out of ketosis. And they satisfy that sweet tooth. They taste, a lot of them taste really good. Like when I get home, because they only have five grams of sodium, I'm going to eat me a pack of those Atkins m &Ms. They only have three, no, one, one net, one net carb. They have a couple fiber, the rest of it sugar alcohol. When sugar alcohol can mess with your blood sugar levels, but I think it's like, it don't like make them high for long or something. I don't really know. Uh, oh God, I feel like crap. Yeah, that tea, I can taste the tea. I can still taste it. I'm, I'm just... I feel like I might throw up because it's just locked in the back of my mind. It's on, it's, it's in my mouth, it's in my stomach, it's in my soul. Every time I belch, I taste it. It is, it is the gnarliest thing I think I've drank. Maybe not ever, but definitely in a long time. <laughs> oh, if you look right there and maybe it's in focus, you see that orange bag that orange bag is covering a little telephone node because people still use landlines and that telephone node is real bad about getting water on it. When you get water on a telephone node like that, well, phones start, you know, losing service. And, you know, there's no cell phone signal back here. There's, there's not a, a drop of it. In fact, I didn't download my doggone podcast that I wanted to listen to. <laughs> So it looks like I'm going to be listening to Moana again today, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're probably wondering, why is he listening to Moana? Why is he listening to like Marilyn Manson or something? Well, I have an old phone. It has basically no storage. 
and I have Spotify. I actually pay a monthly subscription for Spotify, and I downloaded the entire soundtrack. Now, there's a canoe in somebody's house. That house has a posted sign on it, but there's no one living there, apparently. So that's that's definitely a little creepy. <sighs> but anyway, Moana is the favorite soundtrack of my children. And since I drive them to daycare every morning, if they're throwing a, a real bad fit, I'll, I'll throw Moana on. And they'll listen to Moana, and they'll just mellow out. So I don't really have room for my own music. I have a few of my songs, but uh, not many. Uh, well, anyway, yesterday I, I left off on a conversation. I believe I was telling you about cryptocurrency and about mining it and things like that. And I believe I left off telling you about my foray into the world of electronium. Now, to be more specific, electronium is a cryptocurrency in and of itself. It's not Bitcoin, it's a separate one. It's worth probably maybe seven cents each, maybe less. <coughs> and uh, it's actually, it's new and it's not, people aren't going crazy over mining it right now. Uh, so it's easy to mine with a single computer if you're in a pool. Still not, still probably not very profitable to mine just alone. But in a pool, you could pull in a dollar or two a day. But, and the big but is, is you're mining this low level cryptocurrency and you're able to convert it into actual dollars on a cryptocurrency exchange. But the trick is, is that uh, you're banking on electronium going up in value as the days move on and not going down in value. So there's, uh, there's got to be over a thousand separate cryptocurrencies right now and a lot of them are bulk. They're not worth anything. Uh, but, uh, you know, before you spend all your time delving into the world of cryptocurrency and putting your up oh, there we go all right we're gonna roll 15 minutes on the return one now the cryptocurrency thing you know you don't want to put your real money you know like i was telling my nephew he's like hey i want to get into that cryptocurrency stuff and i said well how much money would you feel comfortable setting on fire because there's a potential that you're going to lose all that money. I lost a lot of money. Uh, but it was money that I was comfortable with losing because it was money that I made on swag bucks. And now I know that I really don't have enough income to really do the short, short-term game that a lot of people were playing. I have multiple friends who, you know, they held on to actual Bitcoin when it was worth nothing. And when it became worth something... Well, they cashed out. They sold out. They sold out before it hit 10K or they sold out before it hit 20K. And they are now millionaires. And some of my friends, they they bought, you know, they sold a Bitcoin. Or, well, they purchased one Bitcoin's worth of Ripple, which is XRP, which is what I'm into. And they did that when it was worth maybe... 12 cents it was not worth much <laughs> and then over the course of a year the value of ripple hit 260 something and he made he made about a half a million dollars uh give or take <laughs> on that little investment of one bitcoin <laughs> and uh i bought ripple when it was 60 cents and not understanding the mechanics of how these things work i kept buying Buying high and selling low. Uh, it was bad timing. Just greed overall. And uh, things happened. The entire cryptocurrency market just crashed. But it's expected to pick back up. Every time it crashes, it, it steams right back up. I still have my Ripple Crypto Coins. 
and I'm not going to cash them out. I have about $100 worth. But like I said, it's money that I'm not missing because it's swag bucks cash. And uh, if Ripple ever, ever uh, returns to those big numbers, hey, I'll cash them out. But I doubt Ripple will ever hit, you know, Bitcoin numbers. Just because of the nature of it. Uh, you can't mine Ripple. Ripple has a set amount that they've released. Whereas Bitcoins, they have to be mined. And they have a certain cap. Like there's one day, it's going to be a long time, like 2154 or something like that. The last Bitcoin will be mined. <clears throat> and then... Uh, you know, will I be dead by then? Hell, Bitcoin might not even be a thing. But uh, <clears throat> since they know there's a cap, people are trying to get their hands on it. And the value increases and increases and increases. So now a single Bitcoin is like, a, you know, a $1,000 bill or a $10,000 bill or a $20,000 bill. So Bitcoins are now traded in decimal points, <clears throat> fractions. So... Uh, you know, if you have like 0.1 Bitcoin, you have like a thousand dollars right now. So, so back then, 0.1 Bitcoin, it wasn't anything. Back back when it started, it, one Bitcoin wasn't even worth an entire penny. Oh, I feel so stupid for getting rid of my Bitcoins. But the mining factor is a uh, is an interesting concept because it gives you a chance to actually earn a crypto coin. Without doing much, you know, giving up some of your electricity, putting a little bit of wear and tear on your, your hardware. Uh, in fact, I'm going to learn if mining for uh, electronium is worth it after I jack up my computer for mining it so much. Uh, I've actually got to find a new pool to mine with because the one I'm in, apparently, according to my friend, it has gone under. So I'm going to prepare to move to whatever pool he is on right now. And uh, we're going to try to make a little bit of money. I think we're going to uh, share the same wallet. I don't know. I feel a little iffy about that sometimes. Because mistakes could be made. Things could happen. But I trust him. He's like a brother to me. So we'll probably end up sharing a wallet just so we can get a little extra bump. Uh... Oh, golly, that's a lot. Of, I've talked a lot. I've, I've stayed on topic pretty good today. Not too many uhs and you knows and likes. Oh, damn. You know, no hills today, but geez, I am just weak as hell. I need a big old glass of water. I can't believe I'm already thirsty. I drank two gallons of water yesterday. I've only peed like five, six times. Maybe seven, huh? Maybe ten, huh? But uh, I, I really, I really would love a big glass of water right now. Not gonna drink it. Though. Not gonna drink anything till I weigh in tomorrow. I am running a pretty good sweat right now, even though my dang walk's almost up. Part of me wants to just walk for like two hours. Just walk till I can't walk anymore. Go in there, you know, have a couple coworkers grab me by each arm and pack me to the skills. Prop me up, you know, just weak, just dying. And I was telling, I was telling my wife, I said, man, if I don't lose like 10 pounds from all this crap, I ain't doing this crap next week. It ain't worth it. That bland ass chicken ain't worth it, man. But I have some ideas <laughs> that I'm going to do if I do it again next week. I'm going to be running some fat bombs and they're all going to be sweet. You know, I'm going to eat bland something uh i may do some bland pork chops or something like that but definitely uh next week i'm making cocoa coconut oil fat bombs so just to get that sweet tooth in and get that belly rumbling because coconut oil will make you regular quote unquote <laughs> uh but i was playing Far Cry Primal. This is probably going to be the last time that I'll talk about Far Cry Primal. I've played this game. It's been the game that I've played. The only game I've played here for a couple of weeks now. I've put in the time. And I'm at 98% satisfied. 
So what do I have left? I have a, a quest chain that I have to figure out why I didn't get it because I've beat the game. It's ended. I have defeated Batari. I've defeated Ul. I've killed Da, or well, I had a, a mercy killed him because he was suffering. You know, I've, I've adopted Ul's kids. I watched the credits. At the end of the credits, Ul's child tames a cave bear, which I thought was pretty neat. The credits were really long. The credits for these games are insanely long now. I feel like nobody's being left out of credits anymore in these games. Uh, and you know, when the credits roll, you kind of you kind of flash into the game, and it goes, uh, "The Udom or Oros has been conquered." No, no, the Udom has been conquered, but Oros still calls for me. So it's not a prolonged story thing. It's just that well, now you got to finish. You know, you got to get 100. percent Got to get 100. percent And that's the Oros calling my name. So the last things I have to do is finish that quest chain, which. I did a little bit of reading on it, and it sounds like there were some quests that you do in the map. Like, they're like little random quests you find. And it and it chains main quests from uh, Sayla, or whoever, whatever her name is. The, the first Winja you meet, the girl. And, uh... <clears throat> As you do those, her quests open up and you finish her little journey. And I have three beasts to tame. I have a rare black lion to tame, a rare black dole to tame, and a rare black jaguar to tame. I've seen the black dole, and I've seen the black jaguar, but I've never seen a black lion. So I may stop it. I may stop after I do the rest of the journey. I'm not much into the beast taming aspect. It just gets to be kind of a headache. The hunter vision makes it convenient because it leaves a little smoke trail after rare animals. So it shouldn't be too hard. It's just a matter of it taking a while. Uh, opening up the new section of the map where you have to hunt oil down in his cave was, it was cool. That little section is filled up with uh, Udom warriors, and they all have masks on, which means you gotta shoot them twice in the head. Which I found out after some experimentation. The best bow in the game is the short bow. It's, it's the first bow you get. Because after you max it out, you can shoot that sucker really fast. The double bow, it shoots two arrows, but I mean, you have to be pretty close to a target to hit them with both arrows. It'd be nice if the arrows flew straight parallel to each other. Then you could sink two arrows into the same target, but for long distances, it's just garbage. And the longbow, it takes two shots to kill an Udon warrior with a shortbow. It takes two shots to kill one with a longbow. Even, I noticed, sometimes if you get a headshot with a dude on a mask, arrow goes through, kills him, headshot. Hey. Sometimes you shoot them, the damn mass breaks off, but they don't die. So it's, it's, it's weird. It's inconsistent. I don't know how it works, how that calculates, but it gets frustrating. But with the short bow, you just go through click, 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 just all. Just click, click, click. You don't even have to hold the arrow there. You just click, 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 click. <clears throat> you can shoot guys from not as long of a range as the long bow, but. To be honest with you, if you're going to run into, there's, there's, oh, oh, yeah. I hit an XP cap. The game's like, you've hit the experience cap. You will no longer gather experience points. Do quests to get your the rest of your skill points. And I said, whoa, that sucks. So you really don't even have a reason to do, uh, to do, uh, uh, stealth runs through, through forts and bonfires because the stealth would give you bonus XP. But since you can't get any more XP, bonus XP is pointless and you don't get a skill point for it. So I just ran in there with my short bow and my saber tooth tiger. And I just started jacking people up and 
wow, the short bow really does work on heavies. They're, the heavies are identified with the shield over their head when you tag them. The heavies just jack up my saber tooth tiger. It, it's disappointing. But with my short bow, whew, you throw a bee bomb in there, you start lighting suckers up. I was surprised. I was very disappointed by the fact that I haven't been using that bow this whole, whole time. Uh, so anyway, I haven't gotten all the skills, but the rest of the skill tree is uninteresting. It is as plain as the dirt I'm walking on. I'm not interested. <laughs> I want to finish the journey chain, and I don't give a crap about the last rare pets to tame, because I like my saber-toothed tiger. Now, if there's an attachment linked to, to taming all those guys, all, all those animals, sure, I'll go ahead and give it a shot. But uh, I didn't get an achievement for getting all the Dacia hands, all the idols, all of the uh, the cave paintings. Didn't get an achievement for that. And I was kind of pissed off. I was like, dude, I went and I tracked 100 of these Dacia hands down. 100. And some of these damn things... And we're not easy to get. You had to do some fancy ass maneuvering to get to some of these things. Like there was one. You had to climb up on this big ass mountain. And you had to jump down a slope once you had to slide down a slope to a ledge. And you had to jump from that ledge to another ledge. And you had to jump from that ledge to a ledge to climb. Oh my god, I died like three or four times trying to get it all done. Just trying to find out where to go. Uh, and the caves, you know, you got 12 caves to explore, and they're huge. And they're so easy to get lost and turned around in. And I spent a lot of time exploring those caves, getting the cave paintings and the, the Dacia hands. You know, you once you get those two things, then the cave is highlighted with the word explored. And I was, I was sad that I didn't get achievement points for none of that. I mean, uh and achievements for any of that so uh i'm very curious to know if you get 100 percent if you get an achievement uh so yeah this will be the last time i talk about far cry uh, primal unless i do get 100 percent, then i'll probably talk about it uh some highlights of the game the story is actually pretty good uh i mean it's not it's an fps guys it's a stealth shooter. It's a, it's a sandbox game. For what it is, the story is okay. So basically, you start out, you're hunting for mammoth with your brothers. The mammoth, the mammoth, they, uh, killing the mammoth, that, that's your tutorial. It's fun. Then the blood fang saber tooth comes up, kills your brothers, you fall down a mountain, your journey begins. You run into Sayla, I guess that's her name, and she takes you to Oros, which is like the promised land you're trying to find with your brothers. And then the quest takes off, so you're introduced to these village people, a witch doctor, a, a shaman, uh, you're introduced to a, a priest dude from the Azila guys, and then you're introduced to uh, Dive, one of the Udom uh generals i guess uh you have a you have a few people you have a little huntress chick she's like an expert hunter and you go through their journeys and all that and the story pretty much is this you're trying to secure a place for the winja people and the udom they're all dying out the azila they're they're worried about the end of the world and of course you see that in a couple of little playthroughs you do with the witch doctor. The witch doctor is tied to the uh, Azila part of the story. When you kill Batari and you kill her, well, you take over Da's fort, and then you go after Ul. Well, Ul is the head guy. He's like the main leader. He's been burned. His ears are melted off. And, you know, it's just a, a battle for land and opportunity. And... It ends, you know, not all who are evil are evil. Now, Batari was pretty, pretty bad. But, uh, Ul was, he was crazy, but he was sick. He was not too terribly, well, he was pretty bad. They were cannibals, shit. But, uh, anyway, 
it was a good story. I'm not going to give you the whole thing. Play it if you want to know it. But, uh, yeah, there's my car. Or, I'm sorry. Yo, homie, there's my whip. And I'm at the end of my walk. <sighs> Whew, tomorrow I will be eating something besides, you know, bland food. I will be eating tacos. So much love to y'all. If you're watching, thank you. Click the like. Click the subscribe button. And, uh, hey, man, keep on pounding. Peace out.